One day, while escaping from giant flamethrowing ants in the town of Greyditch, we stumble upon the ruins of the Marigold Metro Station. If we head inside to find shelter, we find even more ants. Now, I'll cover the town of Greyditch and most of Marigold Station in my upcoming video on the quest, Those. But while exploring the Marigold Station, if we head down the ramp to the mezzanine level, we can kill another ant. And peering inside a newspaper kiosk, we find a skeleton. By his body is a box of 32 caliber ammunition and a 32 caliber revolver. And lying on the bench next to him is Grady's last recording. If you're listening to this tape, then my brains are splattered all over a wall somewhere, and you've got a job to do. You need to retrieve the package and get it safely to Ronald Lauren and Gertershade. Tell him Grady sent you. To get the package, you'll need the key. I've stashed it inside an old fire hose case in some maintenance closet in Marigold Metro Station. The key will unlock the safe that contains the package. Look for the room marked by a spinning light. You can't miss it. Good luck. And hopefully, they won't find you too. Looks like this Grady was a courier. And it looks like he committed suicide. In his holotape, he predicted that his brains would be splattered all over a wall somewhere. And sure enough, we find a revolver in his left hand and blood on the bench next to his skull. On the left side of his skull, as if he raised the revolver with his left hand to his left temple. Looks like he chose this way out before they could find him. But who were they? Was he talking about the fire ants? And what exactly was this package that he was supposed to deliver? He gave us two clues. First, we have to find a key, which he hid in a fire hose container inside a maintenance closet. And second, we can use the key to open a safe, which we'll find in a room marked by a spinning light. Heading down to the train platform, if we turn east, we find two tunnels. We can go left or right. Well, if we go right, eventually, we find a Metro Access employees only doorway to the right. Heading up some stairs, we follow a path south, then east, into a small room with more ants. In this room, we find a door to the east, and on the other side of the door, we find a red fire hose box. And sure enough, this is where Grady hid the key. Inside, we find his safe key. Now we need to find the safe. We are looking for a doorway marked with a spinning light. We see a path out of this room to the southwest. This leads us to a hallway and down some stairs where we can kill another ant. Then, rounding a corner, we arrive in a much larger room where we kill another ant. This room opens up to a hallway through a door to the east. The northern path is blocked, so we have to go south. Taking this southern hallway, we arrive back at the train tracks. The tunnel to the south is blocked, and so we move north down the tracks until it too becomes blocked with rubble. This forces us east, where we have to kill even more ants. Continuing east through this corridor, we arrive at more tracks. Turning north, we see a train blocking the path, and on the other side of it, there it is, our flashing light. That must be where Grady hid his package. Creeping down and turning the corner, we find a door locked with a terminal, but both the door and the terminal are locked with easy locks. After hacking or picking them, we can open the door. To arrive in a small maintenance closet. And lying on the ground against the southern wall is Grady's safe. At last, we can find out exactly what this package is. Inside, we find... Naughty Nightwear? What? The Naughty Nightwear is a one-of-a-kind item. It has a DR of 1 and grants plus 1 to luck and plus 10 to speech. 
Despite it being a one-of-a-kind item, it can surprisingly be repaired by a wide variety of items, including almost all pre-war outfits and even Enclave officer uniforms. The Naughty Nightwear has two distinct looks. On women, it looks like a short leopard print nightgown, and on men, it looks like a suit of leopard print long-sleeved pajamas. So this is the package Grady was trying to deliver? With him dead, it now falls upon us to deliver it. Or we can keep it for ourselves. But as we're about to leave this room, a man in turquoise hair races up the stairs. He stops, standing right in front of us, blocking our path. This is Lugnut. I'm only going to ask you this one time. Give me the naughty nightwear. Come and get it from me, if you think you can. I warned you, I was only going to ask once. Now I'm going to take it from you. Found you. Where? No way, it's mine. That was probably the dumbest thing you could have said. Fine, have it your way. How about you pay me for it? I warned you I was only going to ask once. Now I'm going to take it from you. Okay, okay. Here, no need for violence. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now scram. Yeah, yeah, just keep on walking. Or we can pass a speech check to say, I'm keeping it, and I'd advise you back off before I get angry. All right, all right. My mistake. It obviously belongs to you. Now, uh, you just watch it, because I won't be so nice next time. This is the only option that allows Lugnut to walk away alive. This is some highly sought-after underwear. Now, Grady said that this package was destined for a man named Ronald Laren in Girdershade. We met Ronald when I did my video on the Nuka-Cola Challenge, which you can watch here. His small town of Girdershade consists of only two shacks, where he lives in one, and Sierra Petrovita lives in the other. Ronald is a bit of a creep constantly trying to come up with a new scheme to get Sierra to sleep with him. But Sierra, for her part, is completely oblivious. With this in mind, I think we begin to understand exactly why Ronald wants the Naughty Nightwear. If we choose not to keep it for ourselves, we can travel to Girdershade, enter Ronald's home, and talk to him. Hey there, hot stuff. Yeah, he's a creep. Do you know someone named Grady? Grady? Maybe. Why are you asking? We can lie and say, I bumped into him a while back is all. You did, huh? Well, if you ever see that lowlife again, tell him Ronald wants his damn package delivered or bring me back my caps. Or we can say, I found him dead. Holy crap! That son of a bitch took my caps and ran and now he ends up dead? No, I'll never get that package. I have a package for you from him. Holy crap! You have it? Well, hand it over. I've been waiting over a year for that damn thing. I'm not giving you anything. Oh, I know how this game's played, kid. Fine. How about I pay you 200 caps for it? It's the same money I would have paid Grady. Nope. Sorry. I'm holding on to it. Fine. Be an asshole. When you get hungry for caps, you know who to talk to. Hang on a second. You want it, you need to pay for it. Shrewd, kid. Very shrewd. Okay. Seeing as how I was going to pay Grady anyway, here's the caps I owed him. Now let me have it. And with that, he gives us 200 caps and takes the Naughty Nightwear. Or we can just give it to him. Sure, here you go. Hey, thanks a bunch for bringing it to me. You could have been a jerk and sold it to someone else, but you didn't. Ah, uh, hell, let me give you the rest of the caps I was going to give Grady anyway. In which case, he's decent enough to reward us for it. Or we can be really generous and say, here you go, and you don't owe me a single cap. Well, that's awfully generous of you, seeing as I never made a deal with you in the first place. But I guess it's pretty decent of you not to sell it to someone else instead. <laughs> Thanks, kid. And instead of the caps, we get a healthy dose of karma. Or we can pass a speech check to say, I'll sell it to you for 300 caps. Fine, fine, anything to get it. Here's your caps, now hand it over. And with that, we sell him the naughty nightwear. 
I have to go now. Baby, I hate it when you leave, but I love watching you go. Ugh. The thought of him giving this naughty nightwear to Sierra makes my skin crawl. Maybe we should just, uh... No. Instead, we can go to Sierra's shack to try to warn her. Oh, good! You came back to visit! Do you know someone named Grady? Nope. Sorry. That's the only response we get from her about this quest. Now, in my video on the Nuka-Cola challenge, she told us that Ronald once protected her from raiders. Like once, there were these raiders that came by? There were three of them, and their leader was named, like, Lugnut or something. So they, like, kicked in Ronald's door, and he was like, blam, with his gun, and one of them got all splattered. They must have come here to Girdershade, thinking that Grady had already delivered the package. But when they didn't find it here, they went searching for Grady. This new revelation on the story of Girdershade makes Ronald look even more like a jerk. His one redeeming quality was that he defended Sierra Petrovita from raiders. But now we learn that the raiders came here because of Ronald. They were looking for that package. But wait a minute. She said Ronald was attacked by three raiders. He splattered one. The other was Lugnut. We met him at the Marigold Station. Where was the third one? Why wasn't he there with Lugnut? Well, here the story goes cold until we explore the Presidential Metro in the Broken Steel DLC. Towards the end of the Presidential Metro, just before we reach the working train, if we turn right, we find a staircase leading to the Capitol building. At the top of the stairs, lying on a bench, we find the skeleton of a woman. And lying on the bench next to some jet is the holotape. Sorry, my darling. If someone finds this, please give this to my lover at La Maison Beauregard Hotel in East Georgetown. He'll want to hear what I have to say. My darling, they found me. I tried to get away. I tried to get away so we could be together once again. I know you risked your life to get it to me. Combing the ruins, avoiding the super mutants. All for me. It seems I shall never lay my eyes upon your gift. You, you'll have to keep it and remember me every time you see it. I'm so sorry, my darling. So, so sorry I've let you down. So many have died for this thing. So many hearts have been broken. Please remember. I'll always love you. You will be with me forever. In my spirit. I... 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 Love... I love you. Oh, this poor woman. Her last thoughts before death were about how much she will have disappointed her lover. Her lover who got her some gift. Her lover who likely had to kill a lot of other people to get it. What was this gift? Well, in her holotape, we learned that she was supposed to rendezvous with him at the La Maison Beauregard Hotel in East Georgetown. Her remains are skeletonized, but she did mention super mutants, so this must have taken place after the bombs dropped. Could he still be alive? Heading to Georgetown East, if we walk southwest of the metro station there, we find the ruins of a huge hotel. Creeping closer, we see its marquee still above the door, La Maison Beauregard. As it gets dark, the lights flicker on. Looks like there's still power here. Could there be food? Water? Survivors? To find out, we have to head inside. We arrive in a hallway with two paths, either to the right or to the left. Moving left first, we find the reception desk. Behind the counter on the ground, we find a bunch of beer and a copy of U.S. Army 30 Handy Flamethrower Recipe. Ah! What the... You know I'm alive! Okay, we just got attacked by someone with a flamer. Looks like it came from that balcony over there, but we don't see anyone there. Heading up the rubble ramp. What? Oh! There he is! Ah! 
we were attacked by a guy holding a flamer named Lag Bolt, and he's sporting quite a spiky mohawk. Inspecting his inventory, we find a finger, Lag Bolt's combat armor, Lag Bolt's note, Lag Bolt's shades, and Lag Bolt's suitcase key. Lagbolt's combat armor is a completely unique suit of Talon combat armor. It's even inscribed with the Talon Company logo, giving us the impression that he was either a member of Talon Company himself or killed someone in Talon Company to get the armor. Lagbolt's combat armor is one of the best suits of combat armor in the game. It has the second highest DR of any suit of combat armor in the game, 38, compared to a regular suit's 32. It's only one less than the Ranger combat armor we get as a reward for completing the quest Riley's Rangers, which I covered in a video that you can watch here. However, it weighs three pounds more than the Ranger battle armor and has less than half its durability. But it's one of the few items of armor in the game that grant a bonus to big guns, and it grants a whopping plus 10 to big guns. That's greater than the bonus we get from Linden's Outcast Power Armor, and it grants us plus 10 to AP. Compared to the Ranger Battle Armor, which only grants plus 5 to AP, and instead of big guns gives us plus 10 to small guns and plus 1 luck, this could be an endgame suit of armor depending on your character's build. Lagbolt's shades are a pair of sunglasses. They grant plus one to DR and plus three to both lockpick and to sneak. This is one of the best pieces of eyewear in the game. The only two glasses that compete with it are the Lucky Shades, found in Lucky's store near Tenpenny Tower that grant plus one to luck, and Desmond's eyeglasses, found on Desmond Lockhart's corpse in the Point Lookout DLC, which grant plus five to explosives and five to small guns. It's one of only five pieces in the game that grant a sneak bonus. Next, we can read Lagbolt's note. Hey, Lags, this is your big bro. Hope you got the package. I had two of these things specially made for us in Virginia by the tailor. He's a master at this stuff. I know you and your chick will love it. Try not to wear her out too fast if you catch my drift. Hugs, Lugnut. Oh no, Lagbolt is Lugnut's brother. Lugnut hopes that Lagbolt got his package? Could this be the same package we heard about on the Lover's Holotape in the Presidential Metro? What's in the package? Turning around, we see a balcony at the top of a bunch of rubble. This is where Lagbolt was waiting for us when we entered. He attacked from up here and somehow got down behind us during the fight. Heading up the rubble ramp, we see a bar to the right, and behind the bar, a radio blasting Galaxy News radio. There's a crumpled up skeleton on the ground in the corner behind the counter, next to a bottle of Nuka-Cola, presumably the bartender. On the shelf behind him, we find some alcohol and one bottle of Nuka-Cola Quantum. Turning to the counter, we see one of the bar's patrons, hunched over on the bar, surrounded by empty bottles of whiskey. Moving north of here, we find a billiard table, and on top of it, we find a locked suitcase, which we can unlock with Lagbolt's key. And inside, we find all-nighter nightwear. And next to the suitcase, we find a stack of missiles, a mini nuke, a couple of stim packs, and a stealth boy. We also find an eight ball here, but this one doesn't tell us our fortune. The all-nighter nightwear is another completely unique, one-of-a-kind piece of underwear. It has a DR of one, like the naughty nightwear, but it differs in that its stats are plus one to charisma and plus one to endurance. Endurance because all-nighter, right? We get it. However, it looks exactly like the Naughty Nightwear. A leopard print short dressing gown on women and a leopard print suit of silk pajamas on men. So the story I get from this is that Lugnut found a post-apocalyptic tailor in Virginia named The Tailor and commissioned this tailor to craft these two pieces of nightwear. His plan was to share one with his brother, Lagbolt, which they would then enjoy with their girlfriends. But somehow, other people in the wasteland found out about this special nightwear and set out to retrieve it. Ronald Lauren wanted to give the naughty nightwear to Sierra Petrovita, so he hired a mercenary named Grady to steal it from Lugnut. 
he succeeded and hid it in a safe inside Marigold Station, planning to come back later when things were safer to retrieve it to finish his job. But then Lagbolt and Lugnut tracked him to Marigold Station. Remember in his holotape he said, Good luck. And hopefully they won't find you too. Good luck, and hopefully they won't find you too. The they is likely Lugnut and Lagbolt. Now, the details of the other story are not quite as clear, but I think we can make some educated guesses. The skeleton of the woman we found inside the presidential metro said in her holotape that they finally caught up with her. My darling, they found me. My darling, they've found me. She tried to get away, but since we find her skeleton lying here, they must have mortally wounded her. Well, the they must be the same they whom Grady was referring to, Lugnut and Lagbolt. Now, Lugnut and Lagbolt going after Grady makes sense. Grady stole the naughty nightwear from them. But why would Lugnut and Lagbolt go after this woman? After all, she didn't have the package. Her lover, waiting for her at the hotel, had the package. Well, if we read the Fallout 3 official strategy guide, we find a short biography about Ronald Laren. After his wife died, he wandered the wasteland until settling in Girdershade. So there was another woman in his life before Sierra Petrovita. Could it be that the woman whose remains we found in the presidential metro was Ronald Laren's wife? That he was the one who combed the ruins of DC, trying to find the all-nighter nightwear that Lugnut had commissioned by the tailor? Could he have found Lagbolt, stolen the all-nighter nightwear, and then hightailed it to the hotel, waiting to rendezvous with his wife? Could it then be that Lagbolt and Lugnut tracked down his wife to the presidential metro and murdered her, trying to get her to tell them where Ronald was? But when his wife never arrived, he left, leaving the all-nighter nightwear to move to Girdershade. But there he meets Sierra Petrovita. Suddenly, he has use for naughty nightwear again. Going back to the hotel is too dangerous, so this time he hires a mercenary Grady to go steal the naughty nightwear. Lagbolt, Lugnut, and a third raider track him down to Girdershade, but didn't expect him to be so formidable in battle. After losing one of their members, they retreat and separate. Lagbolt heads off to find the all-nighter nightwear and Lugnut to find the naughty nightwear. Lagbolt succeeds, tracking it down to the hotel where we find him and kill him, and Lugnut only succeeds after the Lone Wanderer finds it first. If this is true, then Ronald Lauren's libido is cause for the deaths of Lagbolt, Lugnut, an unnamed raider, and his own wife. Not to mention all the other people his wife said died during his pursuit of this package. We walk away with some disturbing new perspective about the harmless creep in Girdershade. That's a lot of death and heartbreak over two pieces of underwear. We can only hope that whomever ends up with both pieces puts them to good use. What choice did you make in your game? Did you sell the naughty nightwear to Ronald Lauren so he could continue his advances on Sierra Petrovita? Or did you keep them for yourself? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Lion's Pride. This brand new design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other items as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.